Okay, hey guys, hi. Uh, why did I sound like that? Okay, um, I like said something into the microphone and it like buzzed my fucking ears. Hi guys, <laughs> good start. Jesus Christ. Um, welcome back to the podcast. This is episode one hundred and fifty three. Um. Hope you guys are doing all right. This is a good episode. Okay, trust me. This is a good episode. We have a lot of stuff to cover. All right? Call, just call me a, call me a, uh, I was going to say a pool cover because it covers a lot of space. Call me a highway, okay? Because we have a lot of ground to cover. That, that's better. We found it. I fumbled the. I fumbled a little bit, but I got there. Um. Fuck, man. It's it's one hundred and fifty three. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out to the Patreon. Uh, thanks to everyone who's been uh, supporting the pod. We're at how many patrons? Four hundred and eighty two, and that's crazy. Um, and I fucking appreciate it, man. I said once we get the five hundred. Uh, we're going to do bonus weekly, weekly bonus episodes. Cause I'm, I'm only doing them like every other week. So we're going to do weekly ones. Okay. And, um, I already said that, so I can't go back on it. So <laughs> if you want to support, you know, we only need 20 more people, 18 actually. Um, but yeah, just thank you so much for the support. Appreciate it. And the bonus episodes have been really fun. You know, it seems it's a lot more like, chill over there you know no pressure and stuff but you know enough of that um what's been going on this week man i went golfing uh with my dad so i was i was a thing uh, i haven't golfed with him in like 12 years so um that was it was interesting man <laughs> you know uh I hit the ball further than him now, so that's cool, right? <laughs> I mean, he has, like, a bad back and stuff, and he's older, right? He's not the same. Obviously, you get older, you can't do full rotations on your back and your hips and stuff. You can't hit the ball as far, but still felt good, right? Take that, Dad, you know? All the time of him hitting the ball, and I got to, you know, go walk to my ball, and it's not as far as his ball, and I go, don't worry, I'll hit the second one, and it'll just creep by yours. Now look at me, dude. I'm like 100 yards past him. Um, yeah, I'll be, in, I'll be in the rough, or I'll hit it into the fucking water, but still further. <laughs> still further. I'd rather be far and out of bounds than short and inbounds. <laughs> It's all about power, dude. Raw power. Um, but no, it's it was fun. I was it was so funny, man. On the we're on like the fifteenth hole, I think. And I was like, we got paired up with these two older gentlemen. Gentlemen, uh, they were nice, very sweet. Um, but I, we were just talking, and I mentioned to my dad. I was like, yeah, whenever I get paired up with random people, I hate telling them what I do for a living. Cause all it is, dude, all it is on golf courses, bro, like older people. This is why people hate golf so much. It's all fucking old rich people like comparing cocks the whole time. They're just like, well, yeah, I was in the, like the one guy mentioned his house in Florida. Like it was just a thing, right? Like it was just a thing that everybody has. He was like, yeah, when I go down to my house in Florida, there's a fucking course, right? I live on the course. I'm actually living underneath the course. They don't know. Um, I'm, I'm like a little hedgehog. I'm a little, I'm, I'm a little uh, hedgehog there. You don't know me. Um, he, he didn't say that obviously, but he, he was like, he kept bringing up his house in Florida and stuff. The other guy was like, so how long, what do you do? What, what, how long have you been on the board of directors? And it's all business talk. And I can never engage in that because I'm just, you know, I don't do that stuff. You know, I go, you ever seen... You ever watch Neil Breen movies? They're pretty bad, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of what I say in front of a camera. Um, 
You ever revisit old movies that aren't for you and just make fun of them like they are for you? Yeah, that's what I do. Um, <clears throat> but no, I, I was saying I hate telling random old guys what I do for a living on the golf course because like clockwork, dude, like clockwork, they say, well, so, tell me a joke. Oh, you're funny. Oh, you're a comedian. That's oh, I wish I could do that. Tell me a joke. You know, I would give me some of your steer, some of your material, right? You know, show me. You know, I gotta know. Give me a joke of yours. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you, man. Hate that shit. Because, like, he was on the board of directors for, like, a bank, you know? What am I going to do? Hand him, like, a $20 bill and be like, hey, put this in my account. Serp. <laughs> it's the same thing, right? Tell me to do my job? Ah, tell me a joke. Put this cash in my bank account, sir, in my checking account, please. I might like to make a deposit. You work for a bank, right? So I'm doing what you're doing to me, okay? But, you know, my go-to response is, uh, it's my day off, you know? Because then it's like, I don't have to. I don't have to be funny. It's my day off. Um, and sometimes they'll laugh, and sometimes they'll feel cheated out of it. And then he also asked... Hey man, he also asked if I uh, did uh, did like he, if he could book me for a nightclub. I'm sorry. Uh? W- name one nightclub you've been to that there was a stand up comedian. <laughs> you know, name one. Oh my god, you can't because that's the worst idea ever, dude. <laughs> just a huge fucking nightclub of people dancing and then the dj stops he's like all right guys hold on everybody hold on stop the music stop the music and everybody's like what the fuck what the fuck boo boo what the fuck turn the music back on he's like hold on we got a special guest the owner went golfing with this guy and i guess he wants him to do some material and they're like, what are you talking about? This is a nightclub. We want to hear music. And he goes, give it up for Curtis. And I walk out and I'm like, hello. And then just as a dead silence, the movie with those evil ventriloquist dolls, I have the top copy of Dead Silence in my hand, but the place is going crazy. The place is eating me up. But I have a copy of Dead Silence on DVD. Uh, <laughs> no, the place is in Dead Silence. And I go, so you guys ever ever look at the moon and think, it's a bit too high up. Should be lower. Moon should be lower to the ground. Would have been a lot easier for NASA. (laughs) I don't have a joke about the moon and its proximity to the earth. I'll say that. I don't, I'm just coming up with an example. Um, You know, and then I get shot in the heart. That's what would happen. If I try to do stand-up at a nightclub, i get shot in the heart. And everyone would... Be, no one would scream. No... Dude. <laughs> I would get shot in the heart. Nobody would scream. they just go, yep. I, I expected that to happen. That is not surprising. And I honestly wish it happened sooner. <laughs> no one would scream or be scared. They'd be like, all right, music back on now, please. Tonight. Give me everything tonight. And that would happen. And then everyone would dance. And they wouldn't mention it. If someone asked how their night was, they'd be like, it was fun. Typical typical club night, you know? So, yeah, don't hire a fucking stand-up comedian for a nightclub, obviously. Or maybe, maybe he meant, like, one time I was at this uh, party for some fucking brand. They were... They're like, come drink to celebrate fucking our new shoes or some shit. I don't even know what it was. It was years ago. Um, but they had this magician that walked around and like did tricks for all the, the, the party goers. 
And it was awesome. You know, at the time I was taking the piss out of it, you know, cause I was with Dean and we were just like chopping it up. But in the back of my head, I was like, Oh, I love this. <laughs> this is awesome. I love magic. Um, so what if it was like that, but just a stand up comedian, right? Just walking to like individual people and be like, so, uh, <laughs> I was at the dentist office the other day. Kid you not. My dentist had the worst breath. How are you going to have bad breath if you're a dentist? You know? And then they just hand me, like, tips. They throw tips at me for being so funny. Um, But, yeah, that's how my week is going. <laughs> um, Man, I'm feeling good. It is so... It is so crazy, like, the difference in, like, just quality of my mental health and... um. Just every of just of how I live my life when I have a, a an idea for a video that I'm really excited about. When I that compared to me, like I don't know what to make a video about. Maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll do that. Like the the amount of stress that is off of my shoulders. There's still way too much that I put on myself, um, and you know that's a thing I <clears throat> I constantly struggle with, but. And it's a big issue that I have, and I don't think I'll ever conquer it. But, you know, it is a thing that cripples me, uh, sort of mentally and physically in most days, but it's all good. Um, but, no, it feels so good when I have, like, an idea that I'm really excited about, and it's, you know, something that I haven't really seen before, and I get to just fucking go for it. And I don't know, man. Just feeling very... uh. It just feels good. Um, Because obviously to the other videos, like I still have a good time when when I make like commentary videos and just try to make little funny jokes and stuff. But when I have a video idea that's different from commentary, well, I can combine commentary with something else. It's like, I don't know. It's just so exciting for me. With anything else, if you're a creative person, you know, you like doing the same thing for a while, uh, you know, it gets... uh, What's the word? Frustrating, I guess, is, is just the simple word to use. Um, but yeah, I got a new video idea that should be out by the end of the month. I got like a week and a bit, two weeks. Hopefully. I, I think it'll be done by then. But um, yeah, just super stoked on that, working on that. Um, you know, I wish I could tell you guys what it's about, but I don't want to spoil it. Um... But yeah, be on the lookout for that. End of the month, huge video. I'm excited. I don't know how long it's going to be. It's probably going to be pretty long. But um, but yeah, what else did we do this week? Oh, yesterday we went to um, an antique mall um, it's in Hamilton, my hometown of Hamilton, Ontario. We went to an antique mall uh, because we love, we love going antiquing and, you know, and vintage shopping. It's a lot of fun for us. Um, Because I just love, dude, I love, I think I've said this before on the podcast, but I love, like, old, like, fucking, just piece, like, media stuff from, like, and just, like, technology from late 90s, early 2000s is, like, my favorite thing. It's so interesting. Because, obviously, I grew up with it, but it was just, like, it's at a time where, like, I feel like technology was progressing so fast and people were like trying to just hold on to it and be like, is this what it's going to be forever? I don't know. Let's try it. And then just did that so many times where it's like it branched out into these so many weird little like fads and uh, I don't and like toys and shit. It's just like, I don't know. I love it a lot. Um, and uh, got recognized I recognize at the at the fucking vintage mall, and it was so beefy, dude. I gotta get a sound that's like ooh, you know, that'll be pretty versatile. Okay, I'll do that. Cause then if I said that, picture that, you know, if I was just like, I got recognized at the antique mall, and it was like ooh, that'd be pretty funny, you know. So just please pretend that what I'm saying is funny. Um, 
That's what I say in every five minutes during my stand-up routine. Please pretend everything I'm saying is funny. For the love of God, please. Um, but no, I got recognized. It was nice. You know, they were super nice. Um, it's, it's always weird now because I, I just don't go out in public as much as I used to, obviously, because of, like, fucking corona virus covid19 i haven't said coronavirus in like a year why did i say that covid19 i haven't been outside because that much because of it so i get recognized it's like oh yeah <laughs> people fucking like my videos um they're like real humans <laughs> you know it's crazy um so that was cool they were very nice um I it was it's weird because I was only I the first thing I got was uh, George of the Jungle on VH was George of the Jungle on VHS, and I was just walking around the fucking store with George of the Jungle on VHS in my hand, and they're like, "Hey, Curtis," I was like, "Ah, yeah, this is what I got today. <laughs> this this old movie that I like." Um. But no, if you've never been to an antique mall or an antique market, um, bro, especially if you're like in your mid 20s, late 20s, bro, you'll find shit that was from your childhood there. It's weird because we're antiques now. We're getting old. So, um, but I found a, a really cool find. I found a really awesome find. Um, it was at this booth with like a bunch of old like horror stuff, like VHS tapes and shit, and like dolls and action figures and stuff. It's like collectibles. Um, and I saw a Little Mermaid case in there. I was like, "That's weird. Why is that in the case?" And it said on the front that it had the the band cover on it. The band cover. Jake, can you put it on the screen right now for people who are watching? This is the band cover of the Little Mermaid. Uh, well, it's not really banned. They just like, they didn't like halt production on it. I just did some research. They discontinued the cover of the original Little Mermaid print because the front cover of the original print had uh, something in it that looked ex- like very similar to a penis. Um, an underwater cock right there. Yeah. So I was like, oh, no way. I just I just got so excited because I love shit like that. I love... That's like a quirky little piece of, you know, of, of, of history right there, man. It's like, uh, it's like Pokemon cards when, you know, when they're like... If it's like a misprint or something, they're like way more valuable because like it's just rare, you know? They're, they're, they're just more rare than everything, right? Um... And it was 30 bucks, and I was like, you know what? That's a cool thing to have. It's a fun little, it's a conversation piece. You know, it's a conversation starter. It's a real good conversation starter. If there's ever a lull in a conversation, you can just be like, hear about the cock on the Little Mermaid cover? And then, and then you won't have to worry about the conversation anymore because the person that you're talking to will have left the conversation. Um... <laughs> You about the underwater cock? The little Mermaid did? Discontinued it. Banned it. Um, so I got that for 30 bucks. There's some... Let's look it up on eBay. Yeah, bro. Okay. This one... Yeah, that's in really good condition. Little Mermaid out of print. Controversial cover, rare first label, Disney VHS. Uh, it's in very good condition. And it's, oh yeah, it's got the black diamond logo on it, which is very rare as well. Or not, yeah. Just, uh, you know, those are more like coveted, I guess. Yeah, man. And this is $7,500. $7,500. That's wild, bro. I don't think that they're worth that much. Because it's open. If you had a, a sealed one, maybe. And it was in like pristine condition. But 
I don't know. The thing about that is like anyone can just post anything for any price, you know, and then people will be like, whoa, <laughs> that's that's actually like fair. That's a fair price you just put, you know. I could sell like the fucking a scab from my shin, shin scab, you know, for like $300. Curtis Connor shin scab for $300. Would someone buy it? I fucking hope not. I don't think they would. I'm not that cool. You know, if I was someone super famous, then maybe, you know, maybe if I was someone famous, like fucking Machine Gun Kelly or something. If I was someone famous like Machine Gun Kelly, then then yeah, maybe I could sell a shin scab. Hey, speaking of Machine Gun Kelly, we got some videos to watch. Hold on, where's the applause for that fucking segue, bro? Thank you so much. I fucking really appreciate all the love. This episode of Very Really Good is sponsored by Bud Light Seltzer. Folks, there's nothing better than a nice cold bevy on a hot day. Am I right? Especially up here in Canada, like we live for the summertime because, I don't know, we only get like what feels like three days of hot weather. And guess what? The perfect summertime drink is here. It's Bud Light Seltzer. With only 80 calories and one gram of sugar per 355 milliliter serving, you don't have to feel the way you usually feel after you pound back a bunch of sugary drinks, if you know what I mean. With delicious flavors like strawberry, black cherry, mango, and lemon lime, there's a Bud Light Seltzer for everybody. Bud Light actually had to send me like a second package uh, of Bud Light Seltzer because I we drank all the first one. And uh, we drank the second one too. It, we we really like it a lot. It's great. But seriously, if you like Bud Light, and I don't know why you wouldn't, it's Bud Light. It's iconic. If you like Bud Light, you'll love Bud Light Seltzer. If you're hanging in a backyard, if you're going to a house party, or if you're just, you know, recording an ad read for your weekly podcast, Bud Light Seltzer is the perfect pairing. And to my Canadian listeners, there's no need to worry because Bud Light Seltzer is finally available in Canada. So if you're in the market for a new beverage or if you're in the liquor store, you walk by some Bud Light Seltzer, you can go, oh, that's the that's the delicious stuff that Curtis was talking about. I'm going to try it. Obviously, enjoy responsibly. You need to be of legal drinking age to enjoy Bud Light Seltzer. But even if you aren't, just tell your mom and dad about it, and they'll be so jazzed that they'll raise your freaking allowance about it. So yeah, give them a try. You won't be disappointed. Thank you so much to Bud Light Seltzer for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. Love you so much. Back to me. <laughs> um... Okay, so it turns out Machine Gun Kelly's fucked. Uh, he's he's off his fucking he's off his rocker. Um, I will say, Shun, we were talking. Me and Shun, my producer, we we're you know we're talking in our meeting, and he came with the heat. He found this Twitter thread, um, where Machine Gun Kelly, two clips of Machine Gun Kelly that are, that are have been circulating a little bit. You may have seen them, um, and they're. There's something else. They're pretty absurd. Um, so we are going to watch them and talk about them because they are a fucking trip, let me tell you. Let me just record my screen for my fucking podcast editor. Times, I hope that I'm snagging that. Don't let me move to L.A. Oof. Are I'm finding down, her. You counting down the days until she's 18? I'm not waiting until she's 18. I'll go now. I'm 23, dog. Like, I'm not like a creepy age. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm 23, bro. She's 17 and she's like a celebrity. Like, right no. There. there is no limits right there. Robert Plant, who is one of the greatest lead singers ever, for all y'all don't know, he's son for Led Zeppelin, dated a girl that was 14. Axl Rose, who was one of the biggest badasses ever, dated a girl that was 16 and wrote a song on his first album about the girl that was 16. I don't care. Say what you want, man. If Kendall Jenner is in your bedroom naked and you're 50, you're going. Yeah. So, uh... So that's a... So that's a thing that he said into a camera. Um, I still don't know where the fuck he is. Like, for, yeah, like where are you? <laughs> he looks like he's on the set of Ridiculousness. Are you on ridiculousness? It should be for how ridiculous that is. It should be for how fucking ridiculous that is. 
Like, it literally looks like Rob, if you pan the camera a bit to the right, Rob Dyrdek would be there. And he'd be like, check out this guy who got his fucking neck snapped. And he died in a car accident. And everyone's like, ha, 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 ha. That's ridiculousness. If you've never seen it. I'm Rob Dyrdek. I have the biggest shoes and the smallest head. And now look at the, now let's watch these people die. That's how he starts every episode. I have the biggest shoes. Let's watch these people die. Um, back to the video at hand. Um, so I guess the question is, uh, I guess he's talking about Kendall Jenner when she was 17. Um, and he's saying how it, that's not a weird age cause he's 22. Hey, man, yeah, it is. I'm sorry to break it to you, machine gun. Uh, it is. It's a very weird thing to do, to say that. I'll s- Okay, one more time. Times, I hope that... I'm snagging that. Don't let me move to LA. Okay. Oof. Weird. <laughs> Don't let me move to LA. I'll be a fucking pedophile out there, dude. Do not let me. Seriously. Don't let me go. I will be a pedophile there. That's what he's saying. I'm fine her. Are you counting down the days until she's 18? I'm not waiting until she's 18. I'll go now. Bro, why is this track behind? Who is just pleasantly plucking a guitar right behind? (laughs) Why are they playing that music? (laughs) Yes, I'm literally not waiting till a girl is of age. Me, 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 me. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, dude. I'm 23, dog. Like, I'm 23. Okay, even worse. I'm not like a creepy age. Like, Okay, dude. <laughs> He's contradicting himself like literally seconds after. I'm 23. I'm not a creepy age. Even though I'm an adult and she's still a minor, it's I'm not creepy. Hey, dude, if you're, she'd be in a high school. If you're 23 years old and you're talking to a girl in high school, you're a fucking weirdo. There it is, man. And that's, and that's how it goes. And that's and that's what it is. If you're, if you know of anyone, or if you are, or if you know anyone who is 23 years old, an adult. If they, if you're 23 and you go to a fucking antique mall, you're going to find stuff from your childhood. Uh-oh, you're an adult. And if, and if you're trying to have sex, if you're trying to even just flirt or engage at all with someone who's 17 in high school... Buddy, you're a fucking weirdo. You're a weirdo. They have class. You know? They have P.E. All right? They have P.E. They have physical education. If you're 23, don't talk to someone who has physical, who has P.E. class. And I'm sure maybe someone in college is going to is going to college for kinesiology. I'm sure they have a PE, but you don't want to be talking to someone who's going to school for kinesiology because what is that? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm a fucking YouTuber. I shouldn't be talking shit. I just don't know what kinesiology is straight up. One of my best friends in high school, he went to college for kinesiology and to this day, don't know what it is, but happy for him. Um, I was trying to make a joke, but what I was saying, you're a weirdo if you're 23 talking to a fucking kid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm Even if there is a nice man playing nice music behind you, okay? It doesn't matter. Hey, bro, she's 17 and she's like a celebrity. Like, there, there's no... And she's a celebrity, so that's fine. Okay. There is no limits right there. Robert Plant, who is one of the greatest lead singers ever, for all y'all don't know, he sung for Led Zeppelin, dated a girl that was 14. Axl Rose, who was one of the biggest badasses ever... Okay, so just because, like, these guys in, like, the fucking 70s and 80s uh, dated kids, that makes it okay? (laughs) Imagine you're going to court 
you're in court for like murder and you're like, judge, your honor. Fucking Jeffrey Dahmer did the same thing. Okay. What's the big deal? Oh my God. Terrible, terrible defense. All these other people did it. So I get, so I think it's okay as well. Like, if you're this bold to say this, like, if you're this bold to just say this on into a camera that would be, like, distributed, he's got to, he must have been doing, like, weird-ass shit, right? Dated a girl that was 16 and wrote a song on his first album about the girl that was 16. I don't care. Say what you want, man. Oh, uh, also, that was, oh, that was so lame. He's, like, trying to sound, like, tough, but, like, his, like, voice quivered a bit. I don't care. It, trust me. I don't care. I don't care. That's <laughs> someone who, that was his impression of someone who cares so much. <laughs> he just noticed that he was like too deep into it that he couldn't backtrack. So he's like, fuck, I got to go all in, I guess. I don't care. I don't care. I, I don't. <laughs> you. I think you do, man. I think you kind of just went a little too far and then uh, you regretted what you're saying. Say what you want, man. If Kendall Jenner is in your bedroom naked and you're 50, you're going. Okay. I hope they're not friends <laughs> after this because that'd be weird. And I feel like, because he's, he's made music with like Travis Barker and shit and she's like date and he's like dating one of the Kardashians, right? Oh yeah, they're in a photo together. They're in a photo together. Eh, no. I don't like that. Uh, so we'll give that one uh, a one out of uh, one out of ten. Cause um, yeah, you should be uh, you should be looking for people your own age. Machine gun you shouldn't be looking for fucking <laughs> fucking squirt guns. You should <laughs> you should be looking around for fucking squirt guns. Okay, look for other machine guns. Okay, then we got one more video. He's on, like, a red carpet. Um, I don't know what, like, award show this is or what premiere or some shit, but um, let's let's watch it. My child's black. Oh, we didn't know that. Black girls give the best head. <gasps> no, no, now, this is what y'all do. Now, this is, y'all either give the best head or you say you don't give head. White girl, they just give head. You know, like it's just like it's. So the ones who say they don't usually give the best. No, no, no. I'm just saying. I'm saying with black, what you're with what you're saying. You're saying we're told you're not giving. It's not that you don't give the best head. It's just that most of y'all say I don't. Okay, man. Where, where do you think you are? <laughs> There's like a fucking Ford logo in the background. He's like, it's okay. Your dick sucked. <laughs> it's sort of like this. <laughs> don't do that unless you're my man. You know what I'm saying? Like. Whereas you just need us to show your skills because black girls give the best head 100%. Okay, so then... Uh, okay, okay. Uh, so then something happened. This is, I guess this is the person interviewing, edited this video together. Uh, she put, of course, the black woman behind me gets offended and walks away. So someone just overheard Machine Gun um, talk, say all that stuff, which is pretty inappropriate, right? Uh, so she walks away, and this is what he says in response to her walking away. You just got, it's, just, it's just the motherfucking, the difference. Bitch, walk the fuck away then, you fucking dirty big bitch. Yeah, bitch. Weak-ass dress and fake-ass Louis Vuitton purse. I'll go in on this bitch. You are a... Man. He's got problems, bro. Also, I will say he, uh, I think he was very close to saying something that he's not supposed to say. You just got, it's just, it's just the motherfucking, the difference. Bitch, walk the fuck away then, you fucking dirty big bitch. Yeah. Man, imagine being that angry about anything. Imagine calling someone that you don't know a dirty bitch. Cause she didn't like that you were saying a bunch of wildly offensive stuff. You have a bandana on, man. Holy man. Yeah, it was scary how close he was to dropping the fucking 
just saying the n-word listen to that one more time you just got it's just it's just the motherfucking the difference bitch walk the fuck away then you fucking dirty big bitch yeah bitch weak ass dress and dude relax man <laughs> i hope he doesn't say all these things to me if he sees this and then another tweet from him uh in 2010 i guess Oh, wait, no. This is 2006. Uh, I wish 13, 14, 15-year-old girls weren't allowed to be hot, so I wouldn't feel like such a creeper when I look at them. I'm still 19. Just, I'm just saying. Oh, man. What a weirdo. I mean, to you know, to an extent, I understand, like, you know, people can change. People, like, can grow, but, like, I don't know. Those two videos seemed kind of recent. So I don't know. It sucks because well, yo, my mom's name is Kelly. They're not all like that, okay? Not all Kellys. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, let's let's change the subject a bit. In conclusion, actually, that's Fucking crazy they said all that stuff. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly. Never really the biggest fan of him anyway, but... You're weird. <laughs> um, This will all bite me in the butt one day. I'm sure of it. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll be super famous. Super famous comedian and I'll meet him. We'll do a movie together. And then he'll be like, I fucking hear you said, dude. I'll fucking kill you. And I'll be like, shut up, pig, pig bitch. Bitch, whack ass bitch, fake Louis Vuitton bitch. That's what I'll, that's what I'll say to him. <laughs> and I'll grab him by the collar and I'll go, change your name, buddy. That's my mom's name you got. Change your name. <laughs> or I'm going to, Rearrange your name or I'm going to rearrange your face. Hmm? And then he'll be like, hey, can I? Can we get this guy off set? And I'll be like... And the director will be like, sure, yeah. And I'll be like, change change your mind, please. I, I want to be here. <laughs> Please change your... Please reconsider. I'm sorry. I apologize for my behavior. <laughs> I won't grab any more shirts. And he's like, you're grabbing my shirt right now. And I go, I'll change your shirt for you. I'll change your shirt. And I take his shirt off and I put, him on, put on a new shirt for him. What the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> um... That's what he said in that video. He called her a pig bitch. Crazy. Never heard that before. Let's change the subject. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to talk about these tweets, man. <laughs> Y'all gotta talk about these tweets, bro. Um. So UFC, some UFC thing happened. The other week, uh, last week, Conor McGregor broke his leg or some shit. I don't know. I'm not the biggest UFC fan. Um, if my boy Logan Paul ain't fighting, I ain't watching the thing. Um, but I guess <laughs> uh, Addison Ray was there. The TikTok TikToker Addison Ray was there. Um, as like a, I don't know. I, I, she was there as as herself, you know. She was there, you know, making videos and shit. I feel like super rich, famous people just go to stuff. <laughs> yeah, put that, clip that, please. <laughs> clip that, dude. Most smartest thing I've ever said. Rich, super rich, and famous people just go to stuff. You know what I mean, though? They're like just at this event, and you're like, "What the fuck? What are they doing there?" It's like it's just a thing that you do and you're rich and famous. You just go to stuff. Um, so she, there's this tweet that she did 
It says, I studied broadcast journalism in college for three whole months to prepare for this moment. And it was her like holding a, a UFC microphone to like interview people. Obviously a joke, right? Even I can pick up pick up on that. Um Right, she wasn't being like, this is me now. I actually study for three months. Because she put three whole months. That implies that she knows that it's not a very long time. Um, that's obvious that she's fucking around. Pretty funny, right? You'd think everyone would be like, oh, come on. That's not, a, that's not enough time for you to be doing that. Um, and these are all the... Dude, people got pissed the fuck off at this shit. Which is so weird. Uh, someone said, I had to go through a whole semester of comm theory and a crazy news writing professor, plus getting a master's in comm, and Addison Ray just had to do three months of comm for this. LOL. Okay. This is disrespectful to all the people who go to college and work their asses off for jobs like this, and sometimes don't even get them. But because Addison has clout, she, she gets them over qualified sports journalists. Like <laughs> getting so pissed for no reason. I I'll talk about this in a second, but I gotta read all these. Let's put on this sad music. Hold on. <laughs> I can't tell you how many talented and hardworking journalists I've watched not get opportunities because they don't have the camera looks. It's unbelievable. Stealing jobs from those more deserving. Very classy. It was a lot of that. It was a lot of people being like, "You, this is unfair. This is unfair. I went through shit. I went into student debt to be a journalist, and I didn't get anywhere. And now you, who's super famous and can get a bunch of viewers on on UFC and you have a uh, have a huge following gets to just waltz on in yeah that's kind of how that happens man it fucking sucks obviously but also she wasn't actually the fucking main correspondent she was never paid by UFC to do that right I just posed for a fucking picture man she's obviously just joking around you know how many times When I started doing stand-up and I would wait two, three hours to do a five-minute set and when it was finally my turn, the host of the show would be like, hey, sorry, man. Uh, Yeah, this guy, he has a a Just for Laughs showcase tomorrow and he's got to get as much stage time as possible. Can he go? You know, can he go? Can he take your place? And I'd just be like, yeah. You know, just get... He wouldn't take my place, but I would get bumped down the list. It would get bumped and bumped and bumped until I would perform to fucking nobody, man. That's how it goes. Fuck, shit's unfair. But also, she didn't do anything. She didn't take the fucking job from anybody. That's the thing. I get that. It is frustrating when someone who didn't put the same amount of work as you gets more than you. I totally get that, right? But that's not what happened here. So I don't know. It's so funny that people were just like fucking freaking out, you know? But yeah, she I think she like quote tweeted it and was like Um Damn, you guys got me fired because everyone was just so pissed at her. <laughs> and it sucks, man, because I was like, that's funny. Addison Ray, that's funny. That's a funny tweet. And then, dude, she fucked it up. I was rooting for you. You we were all rooting for you. Because what did fucking Addison Ray do? She halfway through the fucking UFC match that Donald Trump is there as well. He's like front row. She goes up and is like, Hey, Hey, I just have to say hi. Hi. I have to say hi. Hi, Donald Trump. I'm Addison. Hi, I'm Addison. I have to say hi. Hello. All the 
all the millions of people that you pretty much killed because you were handled COVID terribly, and all and all those kids that you kept in fucking uh, those fucking camps and shit. Yeah, I just have to say hi. Yeah, when you said, dude, when you said you could just grab them by the pussy. Oh man, I have to say hi. And all the comments were like, to this, in response to this, were like, oh, what? You can't say hi to the president? It's just weird, right? Why go out of your way? You're not going to do that to someone you disagree with, right? And I feel like most people should disagree with Trump's ideologies, right? Like, if you fucking don't like Trump, you're not going to be like, I I have to say hi, <laughs> How are you? I hope you're doing well. You're not going to fucking do that, man. So it sucks. I was rooting for Addison, and then I saw that, and I was pissed off. Um, What are we at? 40-something? All right, folks. We'll wrap it up. We'll wrap it up. Ugh! Big yawn from the kid. Okay, big thanks again to the Patreon supporters. If 20 more of y'all support, uh, we will do weekly bonus ones, and it'll be a good time. Um, but, uh, yeah, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed it, you know, slap a like, you know, leave a comment and shit. Leave any topics or stuff you want me to discuss. You can send some advice to verylygood at gmail.com. You know, patreon.com slash good. You can check it out. Um subscribe, all that shit. I don't know. Do what you want. Just support, you know. I appreciate it. Big stuff coming. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. That's it. I'll wrap it up. Thank you so much for listening. That was episode 153. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. And uh, enjoy the rest of your week. See ya.